As the LSA market matures, the companies that survive will be the ones that distinguish themselves from the pack. The Brazilian CMAX Amphibian does exactly that. Here's Carlos Besa, president of CMAX USA. CMAX was designed by Miguel Rosario in Rio de Janeiro in 1999. Uh, the prototype went up in the air. At the end of 1999, uh, the airplane was flying. And uh, currently, we got 91 aircraft flying worldwide and we got eight aircraft at the floor of the factory in Rio de Janeiro ready to be delivered. We have a leather uh, interior with the marina float seats in case if you needed uh, the flotation for the water. And we have dual controls, uh, center stick, dual brakes, and in Brazil we use a lot this airplane to do flight training in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The fin that we use is just to help the pilots that doesn't have this kind of experience when they jump uh, from a Cessna to a, a pusher, which case is the C-Max, they have a tendency not to use enough the feet and most the, the ailerons. And the, the reason we have the fins, it's uh, in case they don't use the feet, the, the nose of the airplane is going to follow, uh, the tail of the airplane is going to follow the nose because of the fin. And the fins are optional. The, the landing gear is electric. Uh, we also have a system that we have light indication, a panel. We also have a, a mirror on a, on a sponsor so you can take a, have a visual. Uh, as a seaplane, of course, you don't want to land with the landing gear down, but unfortunately with the C-Max we had two landing gears that, that landed in the water with the landing gear down. They didn't go upside down, and the reason of that because the landing gear is uh, located aft on the fuselage of the aircraft, so that helps a little bit because you get more room in front of the airplane, more buoyancy. The C-Max can taxi with that bubble canopy open, which provides a pleasant breeze since the propeller is behind you. The nose gear is free castering, but the rudder is ample for steering, unless you're crawling, in which case you need to puncture the C-Max's somewhat uncomfortably placed brakes, as Besa demonstrated. Yeah, I'm just tapping the brakes slightly, just tapping it if I want to go right or left. If the airplane's got enough speed, you'll be able to use just the rudder instead of use the brakes, which I'm doing right now without the brakes, just with the rudder. We took off and went flying. The center stick was easy to adjust to, and the controls are very sensitive. Some might say too sensitive. But, true to what Basa said about the fin, let it go and it returns to straight ahead flight. The C-Max was stable at all speeds and stall performance was docile and predictable, and the view out that canopy was fantastic. Then we did a few landings. Yes, okay. I'm still just looking if there is any logs or any debris in the water. I didn't see anything. So basically what I'm going to do right now is just like we're going to practically like taking off on the runway. We're going to do base and then uh, downwind, final, and then we're going to do touch and go. So that's the direction the wind's coming from. It's about uh, 300. I have to keep my speed between 70 and 60. On final, I want to get up to about 60. Final check, landing gear up and locked, we clear the land on water. As the airplane coming in close to water, I just want to add a little power just to stop that descent. Handling on the water was excellent shouldn't be a problem for even a newly minted seaplane pilot. Landings on the pavement are a bit more like a twin than a single, and the gear is a bit stiff. But this compromise means you can do things with the C-Max that most other LSAs can only dream about. If your LSA mission is primarily fun, and you envision lakes, rivers, and even calm salt water in your future, the C-Max is worth a look. I'm Jeff Van West for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.